morning. Um, good to see everybody today. Um, getting an opportunity to look back at uh, last weekend's game. Obviously, again, disappointed uh, in the in the result, but really thankful uh, for the leadership on this team. Uh, thankful for uh, you know um, our guys. Uh, they fought their butts off. Uh, we played one of our more physical games on both sides uh, of the ball. Thought our guys gave great effort. Uh, showed great pride, and um, uh, we really gave ourselves a chance uh, going on the road against a really good team, uh, number two uh, offensive team in, in college football and, and uh, number one in many categories as well on defense. And uh, again, this is uh, we, we played a, a really poor third quarter, uh, but played an excellent first half. Uh, really outplayed them there, and then even in the in the fourth quarter, we still continued to fight, give ourselves a chance, uh, move the ball. Uh, neither neither offense uh, really had much success in the fourth quarter, but uh, we got seven first downs. They got zero. I think we had seventy uh, plus yards of offense, and they 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 had seventeen uh, you know yards of offense. And in a in a game where it's you know a twelve point game, you know a lot of things can happen uh, and our guys continue to, to fight. We showed some improvement in some areas, uh, you know, and uh, so I want to recognize that, you know, through the course of the year, that's the hope um, that uh, the improvement happens sooner rather than later. And some of that uh, has been more incremental than you want, but it's certainly been there. And uh, unlike our previous uh, two games uh, where we you know, turnovers were a huge factor in those games. We, for the most part, we, we put one on the ground on a really good play by them. Uh, at, uh, you know, on a mesh play, uh, on a run play, uh, you know, the turnovers, we did a, a really pretty good job going on the road and taking care of the football uh, as well. So those are things that you, you look at, you know, again, turnovers, we did lose it. Uh, we lost it by one, uh, the margin, and uh, but we did run the ball uh, much more effectively and efficiently than they did, and thought the lines of scrimmage uh, from a, from a run game standpoint, uh, short yardage standpoint, all of those things, our guys really uh, held up well on both sides of the ball, and um, again our third downs, fourth downs where we hadn't been uh, very good on offense, again. Uh, we're just under 50% on the day, uh, which is a solid day against, again, one of the best defenses in college football. Uh, the first half, we were at 70% conversion rate and really, again, just really uh, playing really, really well. Um, you know, where, where we uh, fell short and lost control of the game, you know, I thought uh, two drives where we had positive plays, our first two drives on offense uh, were negated by uh, penalties, uh, where, again, we played much more clean in the first half and made some critical uh, mistakes uh, in the third quarter on those first two drives. And uh, we were not good enough right now to overcome uh, many self-imposed, uh, you know, um, mistakes, if you will. And uh, on defense, uh, bad eyes, uh, two busted coverages, and uh, a couple explosive plays, and they scored on their, their two opening drives of the, of the third quarter. And uh, we got dominated in the third quarter. And uh, those were, the, two, those were the, the four drives, two on offense and two on defense, where they, they scored 13 points and, um, and then didn't score again in the third quarter. And then they, they scored three points in the, in the fourth quarter on a short field. Thought their punter did a nice job of, of putting them in some good positions. We let a couple balls hit the ground, and, and uh, then we had a return uh, where uh, the play where they said they targeted us and they reviewed it. And we also had a hold. Uh, you know, one of our best players on special teams had a little tug and, uh, you know, making a tough competitive play. And next thing you know, we're taking the ball at the 10 yard line, you know, as an offense. And again, like I said, uh, and then the next punt, you know, where the ball goes out at the two. They're a rugby punter, and we're in the middle of the field, and we need to be slightly left middle so we can field that punt. And uh, we let that one really excellent job by them, but not a good job by us. And now we're taking the ball off the two yard line. And we, we move the ball uh, from there, but uh, too little, too late. And those are all things that matter uh, when you. Uh, you're playing good people, and uh, you're you're in the hunt, and you have a chance to win. Those are are things that uh, that really matter. But I would be uh, remiss if I didn't, you know, just 
recognize, uh, you know, our leadership, the, the, the continued investment, the fight that our guys, uh, for a lot of people that may not be good, but that's okay. Um, you know, I, I, my concern is, uh, you know, the, the mindset of our players, the belief, their, their investment, uh, how hard they're working, how far, hard they're competing. Uh, are we giving ourselves a chance uh, with effort and toughness and physicality? And we certainly, uh, we did that. Brent, do you still meet with Joe on a weekly basis? And how much do you appreciate his counsel when you have to make tough decisions, kind of like what you did last week with Seth? Yeah, I do. And um, I, I met with, I hadn't talked any uh, to Joe uh, prior to me calling him uh, on Sunday, of, I don't know what, a week ago Sunday, and I told him what I was going to do. So I hadn't talked to him about whether or not. Uh, what he thought about it uh, when I called him, I had made the decision, and it was great. Uh, but yeah, we meet uh, weekly, and a lot of times I talk to him uh, a number of times during the course of the week, just normal uh, protocol. But uh, yeah, he's uh, he's the best in the business. He's been around a lot, both good and bad, and and uh, difficult situations that um, being in this profession, a coaching profession, and co collegiate athletics, he's got a lot of wisdom uh, that. You know, he can guide all of us coaches here, you know, uh, at the university. Do you still feel like you have a vote of confidence from Joe during this program's tough yeah. time? And if so, what are some of those encouraging words he tells you right now? Well, I mean, I'm not going to give intimate conversations, but yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um, he's got good perspective. He, he knows things uh, where there's a great alignment uh, from a perspective standpoint. Uh, what we're dealing with, and um, uh, so that's the extent of you know conversations. It uh, you know he's kind of living and dying in the in the moment of the season uh, like a coach would, but being a, a great vessel of support. Mm -hmm. Ryan yeah, Brett, I want to ask you about the the offensive line specifically uh, <laughs> development. <laughs> How do you feel like that's gone? This year, are you happy with the, the progress when you look at uh, some of the young guys? Like Saturday, we saw a lot of Logan Howland and Keith Ozida. Yeah. You know, how do you, you measure uh, that with that group? Yeah, well, again, you got to have perspective. Uh, so, uh, you know, one of those is, you know, we've gone back to back to back years where you lost players that could have chosen to come back. And so when you're losing guys early, um, it puts a little more pressure uh, on the position. And I've, I've been fortunate enough to be on a lot of teams where uh, several years you lost, you know, guys that were draft eligible um, early to the draft. Not an easy thing to uh, continue to replicate the same, you know, uh, consistent perf level of performance. Uh, sounds good, but it's hard. Uh, and so, again, as I talked about some point in time here in the last week or so, you know, we lost, I think, three guys in 21, three starters um, that could have come back you know, going into the 22 year. Then we lost, um, I believe it was Anton and Wanye uh, early. Uh, and then we lost um, uh, Tyler and, uh, and uh, Andrew Rame, and, uh, and then we lost Caden Green. You know, those are all guys that, you know, technically could be back uh, again. And so then you, when you're doing that you, and you, again, playing young guys uh, out of high school, it's, um, it's more difficult at that position than any other position uh, for lots of reasons. Um, and, you know, as a result, you know, we had to take some portal guys. And so what comes with that, they're new too. And, but, uh, so that's how you, you you know you're in the position where you may be having to play some guys prior to them you know being quote unquote you know uh, you know ready if you will. So what are the things that they're not going to naturally be as good at as a young player? And you're talking about uh, you know a couple of freshmen in there that are getting baptized, uh, and you're not going to be confident, and you're not going to be strong. Uh, naturally, um, you know, as strong as again a fourth or a fifth year player, some of the guys that they're having to go against. Uh, so, 
Um, but when you're not confident, you're not physical. You know, when you're not confident, you're not getting off on the on the on the on the snap. And uh, and we did that several times. I mean, we just don't get off on the snap. You know, one guy says he the rest of the line gets off. You know, on the clap, and and we don't. And I'm just not pointing a finger and blame. You know, he just we thinking about what we can't be thinking about, just like a defensive player looking at the wrong thing. You don't look at the right stuff, you're going to get punished, period. Uh, you know, if you're if you're not thinking about, you know, uh, the right things, you certainly start with a snap count and you can get overwhelmed. And um, and it happened in, in the game. And uh, or, hey, you know, you, where's my help coming from here? Uh, center sliding away. I'm in, a, I'm in a man protection scheme. I can't just I can't go the wrong way and turn the three technique loose. And when you play uh, again, I, nobody wants to hear. I'm going to say it anyway, because it's you know, what the facts are. But when you're playing freshmen, freshmen play like freshmen sometimes. And they haven't been they don't have, uh, you know, experience and wisdom they can lean on. And uh, so that happened a few times. But at the at the end of the day, I, I really felt like and this is whether it's, uh, you know, while Jacob was still healthy and whatnot through really, you know, three three quarters, we gave ourselves a chance on the offensive line. You know, we played had winning performance and uh, had three sacks, you know, prior to the last six, seven minutes of the game. And uh, and one of them was a uh, wasn't a shouldn't have been a sack. It's a it's a mesh. It's a run play. And uh, they counted the fumble as a as a sack. And then uh, later in the game, uh, you know, on the double pass, you know, we we get a sack by uh, Bauer Sharp. You know, he, he pulls it down because the guy's covered. And, uh, and I think we had six sacks in the last 11 snaps of the game. So, it, it, none of, like I said, none of it's any good. You know, we got to be better. We got to, you know, know the snap count, get off on the snap count. But overall, uh, again, development piece, again, we're in the infant stages of that. You know, uh, Heath Ozide has done some really good things. And he's he's got a tremendous ceiling uh, in front of him. And uh, we, we really believe Logan Howling can play this game a long time. Uh, uh, but he's not there yet, and like you would expect, you know, he's uh, and right now he's not an overly confident uh, guy, and, um, and at times Heath's not, and uh, so that comes from going through it, and it's not a a great solution, uh, quote unquote, but um, that's where we're at, and um, but uh, you know, again, Bill Beatenbow uh, is one of the, the best in the business, and he's done a great job. He has a career of of doing more with less. And developing guys, uh, taking you know undervalued uh, guys, and getting them in a position to play well. And uh, but that being said, again, if you if you look at a stat sheet uh, right now, we're you know we're really bad uh, when it comes to lots of spaces, and uh, and sacks is one of them. And uh, so you got to have perspective on all of it. Uh, at the end of the day, none of it's any good, and uh, we're working you know, relentlessly on trying to improve and get better and, you know, in all the ways that you can during the course of a, a week. We're going to move Isaiah Autry over there and don't know whether or not Jake Taylor's going to be available. Jacob Sexton will be out for a little while and, uh, you know, not having Garen Hatchett uh, inside is, you know, reason why, again, Heath was uh, put in that position. And, and again, like I said, he's done some really good things uh, for a freshman guard that's having to play in there a little sooner than you would ideally like. Uh, uh, but he's done some good things, and he's a, a tough kid, and uh, so is Logan. And, uh, you know, tough guys that they want to do well, and uh, they've got great, great futures. You know, we need to uh, help them continue to play well. We did some chip protection, and when we did that, we didn't give up any sacks. Uh, we, you know, once the fourth quarter happened and we're running out of possessions, now you, you got to find ways to move the ball, and they're sitting in soft, you know, umbrella coverages, and you get three guys out against, you know, uh, seven guys in coverage. Uh, it's going to make it for tough sledding, and uh, none of that was any good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brent uh, Jackson seemed to hold up pretty good in difficult circumstances Saturday. Is the rest of the season in part? sort of a discovery for the future in terms of does he want to come back? Do you want him back? How do you figure out the money? Those <laughs> kinds of things. Um, yeah, I thought Jackson had his best performance of the year. Uh, I thought he did a great job going on the road and uh, playing against a, a top-ranked defense. And again, he completed over 70% of his passes, made a lot of great decisions, ran the ball well. 
uh, threw it on time, uh, did it fantastic. I had a great game and uh, having fun and getting comfortable and uh, not playing with a, you know, a bear on his back. He's just was played free and uh, thought uh, Kevin Johns did a fantastic job of getting him ready and uh, giving a new fresh perspective from that standpoint. And, uh, you know, my, my assumption uh, is that he dang right he wants to be back. Why would he not? You know, that's how I look at it. I don't have my head in the sand. Uh, I would be uh, concerned if I was thinking in that way. Oh, I wonder if he wants to be back. Well, shit, you'd start quarterback at Oklahoma. <laughs> that's your dream, you know. You turn down a lot of good people to come here. And uh, now you've faced some headwinds, and now you're just going to quit. I don't, I don't see that in him, and I don't see that in guys in our locker room. Uh, does it happen in college football or in life? You're damn right, and, uh, but not with people that are built with, uh, with the right stuff. Not at all. And, uh, and Jackson got the right stuff. George. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> we got, we're, we got good in IL, uh, if that's your, uh, what you're referencing. And, uh, but, you know, there's a, you know, a thing now uh, called Rev Share that it's past its initial, uh, you know, steps. And, um, and we'll be in a great position from that standpoint, you know. But at the end of the day, for me, I want guys that want to be here because they want to put on the, the crimson and cream. Uh, they they love the coaches, they love the locker room, they uh, they love being in Oklahoma sooner. Uh, that's where it all starts with me, and uh, you know, I, I believe the guys in our locker room, uh, you know, uh, that they love, you know, meeting that criteria. Yeah, I believe that firmly. And, uh, but nobody in college football is going to be immune from uh, losing some guys. Uh, that's all going to be part of it. And, and again, if the storms are a reason why guys, guys want to leave, then I'm all for it. I'll help them pack their bags. Uh, I believe in that too. And, uh, but our guys are uh, strong-minded. They believe in what they're doing. They believe in each other uh, and believe in their opportunity, thankful for their opportunity. I, I, I see that by how hard they work, how hard they fight, how hard they compete. Yeah, Brent, uh, I heard you say last night on your show that your message hasn't changed. Um, I'm wondering, you know, it, it's human nature when you fail to let seeds of doubt into your head and question maybe what you're doing. How hard has it been to maybe keep those things out or maybe easy for you? And what signs have you seen, and you kind of mentioned some of them, that the direction of this program is, is, is heading in the, in the right direction? Yeah, well, again, uh, what, what do we measure the, the progress from a year ago? I would, if that's what we're, we're measuring it, we're, uh, we're much better on defense and certainly uh, made a great improvement in our kicking game. You know, just look at all the efficiencies where a year ago uh, we were one of the worst in college football efficiency in special teams, and now we're, we're in the top. You know, I don't know what exact. I'm not a, a, a stat chaser, but I do know we're a, a top 20 uh, special teams unit now. And, uh, and some of that was uh, youth, and some of that was uh, figuring out guys on our own roster, making kicks, uh, being you know more consistent. You know, and once Luke Elzinga took over a year ago, uh, punting the ball, and and uh, then we've got a bunch of uh, a good young players that are in year two and year three on those special teams unit. They're playing fast and physical and violent, and they understand. Uh, the value of special teams and the efficiency and the the details of it as well, and that shows. And uh, and again, we were uh, you know a really good offense, not perfect our first two years. Uh, we made a tremendous jump uh, in all the efficiency spaces. Uh, Dylan went from a sixty percent conversion or a, a, a completion percentage quarterback to you know seventy percent. Uh, we went for a really below average third and fourth down offense uh, in two thousand twenty two. Uh, you know, to one of the best in college football and uh, scoring points and red zone offense and all of those things. And for lots of the obvious reasons, uh, which you all have probably been reporting on for the last several weeks, um, there's been a, a drop off uh, in our offensive production, uh, a dramatic drop off. Uh, this season, and uh, but I believe in you know the young talent that we have recruited, and uh, the guys that are uh, coming in the future, and our ability to go um, help in recruiting and making our roster better. Uh, in the, today's uh, landscape, we have recruited really well, um, going on our our fourth class, and uh, and then again I. 
uh, I, I love the guys on our uh, defensive staff and the things that Zach and combined with the other guys on our defensive staff have done. They've done a tremendous job. Have kept us in really in every game, uh, given us a chance. And uh, again, I know at the end of the day, the uh, you know, the losing three straight uh, really uh, sucks. It stinks. There's no way to try to defend it, but uh, we always got to have the perspective and, and what was good, what was bad, and what do we need uh, to get better at, what was the opponent, and what was Oklahoma. And, uh, you know, defensively, we've given ourselves a chance to win, uh, you know, uh, each and every week. And we've also played a part in, you know, some degree. Uh, maybe it was South Carolina. We didn't force a turnover. It's two straight weeks. We don't force a turnover. We need to force turnovers. We've uh, that's a formula for success and how you win. You force turnovers. You complement, you know, uh, each other, and you give the offense a short field. And Tennessee, we didn't capitalize. We gave the ball right back. You know, a game where we could have had a chance to win that game, and uh, uh, we didn't because we didn't capitalize. You know, when we had those opportunities, but we need to get back to that. Uh, as well, you know, a week ago we had six acts. This, you know, against Ole Miss, we only had one, and that's disappointing. And we needed a, in a game that you know was within arm's reach all the way to you know to the end of the game, we needed to create some negative plays, and uh, like turnovers, maybe go score on defense. We were able to do it on the road at Auburn. We didn't do it, you know, on the road at Ole Miss. And uh, so, uh, but you know, I'm, I don't sit here and, and think about all those things that you said, but uh, I know I see what I see every single day. And, uh, and our guys uh, believe in, in what we do, and there's a formula for, for success and winning that I've had a long time and have matured through through the, through the years and believe in work and believe in improvement and development. It's a developmental game. And then I believe in finding ways to put your guys in position to be successful. And, uh, and I, I wanted to give, again, a, you know, a body of work that would – uh, show whether or not we um, is that youth, is that injuries, or is it, do we need to do a better job of helping them? And um, had to make a, make a tough decision two weeks ago uh, to help us get better. And uh, I believe, you know, uh, I believe it it did. And uh, but time will tell. Mm -hmm. Grant, to ask about a couple of your young interior defensive linemen, what do you see from Jaden as he's continued to progress going up against the SEC offensive lines, and then David, we've seen kind of the cast. How's that? on a ranch or not as far as his development kind of continued to, to press on behind the scenes a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Jaden's a great example uh, of a young freshman that came in with a he, he brought in um, fundamentals, uh, physical toughness, mental toughness, uh, and the ability to play fast as a result. Um, great work ethic, really smart guy. Uh, football was easy for him, and so all those things transitioned to his ability to become a starter uh, uh, you know, was a as a game captain. You know, a week ago, um, has held up r incredibly well. Has played really well. Has been a model of consistency, uh, which is probably the best quality um, that I believe you can have is just being a consistent week in and week out performer. It's really hard. Everybody in college football is going to show up and practice with energy and enthusiasm and passion the first few weeks. But where are you at week eight? You know, week nine, week ten. Where are you after you, you've lost, you know, some really tough games? Where are you then? And he's been the model of consistency. He hadn't flinched, uh, you know, and really just proud of of, of those things. And uh, he's gonna he's got a tremendous tremendous future, uh, and he cares deeply for his teammates. Uh, it's not he shows up every day wanting to be a great teammate. Uh, and then uh, David Stone, the the cast is. You know, it's an inhibitor, uh, if you will, but he's fought through it. You know, he's still at practice. He uh, goes and takes, you know, live practice reps and things of that nature. He's a tough guy. He wants to improve. Well, his David Stone's best quality, um, he has this fantastic work ethic, but he has this um, amazing self-awareness. And so as a result, he doesn't get in his own way in the improvement process. He, re he sees it for what it is. He'll have a... Uh, Good things that he's he's feeling himself after a good day at practice. You know, he whooped somebody, but he says, "Man, I got that was a really good inside session." But when we got the team, you know, good on good on the third down period, I didn't do as well. I had I had a bust. Man, I got to be better. And uh, he's up up in the coaches' offices every night, just trying to get a little more knowledge. And just uh, he's a gym rat and uh, doesn't shy away from. 
uh, tough moments, and I love that about him. He's going to be a fantastic player because of those two traits there, the work ethic and great self-awareness and the hunger to improve uh, every single day. Mm -hmm. Brent, I, I realize pass defense is more than just one, you know, a corner's yeah. got to have safety help and whatever, but how well is your corner back game? It's, playing yeah, game? It's, it's, we're in, way too inconsistent. And uh, some that's really good, and if you're only as good as your last snap. And, uh, you know, so good good in the first half. You know, the corner play was, was good in the first half. Um, linebacker play, you know, our underneath coverage and recognizing play actions and letting some routes get in behind us, not so much. Uh, needs to be better. Uh, and then in the second half when, you know, we get to, again, third and 12, you know, we get some bad eyes. Initially the coverage is great. And then um, we do the unthinkable and man-to-man -man coverage. We take our eyes off our man. We lose them. They make a the quarterback makes a really competitive play with two defenders bringing them down, and the receiver uh, made a great play, you know, too. So good competitive play, but bad on our part with the discipline and taking his eyes off uh, his man. And, and next thing you know, they they score two plays later on the double move, and um, so it all looks bad. You know, you give up a, an explosive play on the on the scramble, you give up an explosive play on the double move, and uh, you know another time we got a a good coverage uh, called and uh, corner on one side plays really well, the corner on the back side bust his coverage, and they throw it for whatever 28 yards over our head, and and we got to get our guys not to not to bust coverages, you know, and then the uh, the. The experienced player needs to he needs to know the call and be in the right call, and that's football. Uh, sometimes you don't get exposed. Sometimes you bust the coverage and they don't take advantage. And good people are going to find you, and they did. And uh, but at the end of the day, we gotta we gotta be better. Uh, Eli Bowen was was really good all day, and you know we were inconsistent. You know at uh, other spots, and uh, you know Jacoby uh, played. Um, some and you know, he's I really believe in him and um, but he had a, a tightened hamstring and so he couldn't play in the latter part of the game but uh, Dez has been uh, banged up and been out of practice the last few weeks uh, just been available for the games and he's got you know uh, issue he's dealing with and so uh, some of that rust shows and then uh, you know can I playing a lot of snaps you know and uh, but he's played his butt off. You know, sometimes he's been not so good and got exposed. Some other times he's been fantastic. So a little inconsistent there um, uh, as well. And then McCarry's been banged up, you know, and uh, unavailable early in camp and missed all the camp and uh, came back and then got hurt again. So we got to stay healthy there. You know, Gentry Williams being out for the year two there. So we've been a snake bit at that position uh, and uh, you know, but we got to be better, and again, and and, and certainly in the plays that that um, uh, we got to be better with our eyes or better with our fundamentals. And you can go back and say, "Well, that's coaching." No, no kidding. It, it is. It's all at the end of the day. It's inconsistent, and so it starts with us. And uh, but it's been some times that have been outstanding, and some other times that explosive plays. We're better, much better at it, giving up explosive plays this year. Don't know what the number is, but I just watch us as a unit. We're more consistent. But we can be better, uh, and we need to be uh, in order to uh, to play better in that third quarter on those first two drives. We need to be better there, uh, and certainly on defense, on things that that we control us. And I'm not talking about competitive plays. I'm talking about things that that we got to be better at. Yeah, Brian. It seems like guys like Michael Bo, uh, Bo, uh, Boganowski, Jaden Hardy, and Reggie Powers have done like really nice job on special teams. Mm -hmm their ability to stay locked in as you guys go through the struggles and how might a week like this one that's coming up maybe get them a chance to get them on the field more? it's really it's it's the whole season you know what you don't see is they're getting a ton of reps in practice and uh and they've played in in several games and they've gone in and have done really well at times and then some other times like ah you know he looked like freshman Man, I'm really excited about those guys. I mean, I think they are going to be phenomenal. And um, no coach speak. That's just what I've seen. And they've got great mindsets. Uh, they're tough guys you know, mentally. Uh, they're tough guys physically. 
uh, they all like, like they're all, they, they're contact guys, you know, Boganowski, Powers, Hardy, they're fearless. Uh, you know, Hardy wants to, you know, uh, he'll, he'll go play anything. And even though he trains at one position, he's, you know, every game, he's like, you know, always tapping you on that, man, I can go and do this, I can go and do that. And that's what he did in high school. And I wouldn't doubt it, I wouldn't put it past him, but we're trying to get him good at one thing. And, um, and so, uh, but those are guys, they have range, um, they're physical, they got great natural instincts, all three of those guys. I mean, we, we crushed it with those guys. Uh, I'm incredibly proud of those guys. And again, being you know a freshman coming in and, and learning the depth of what they need to learn week in and week out. And again, there's a game plan thing that you have to, uh, some things you carry with you, and sometimes it's a hey, game plan specific, and they've done a, a really nice job. You always find windows to try to get them in the game, and uh, sometimes it works for you. You can get them in, get them out. But the, the depth of what they're, they're taking legit number two reps all season long, there's going to be a cumulative effect of that and it's gonna pay off, and it is paying off on their development. Um, but uh, really, and they're great leaders too, for young guys. They're just mature beyond their years. And, uh, and again, they're gonna get in and they're gonna do some really good stuff and they're gonna do some stuff that uh, that they'll learn from. And uh, like I said, you learn the most, you know, through some uh, failure and, and uh, you know, not having great results. And, and, but what I love about it, they have a mental toughness too to come right in the in the film room on Monday and and take the the, the corrections the right way and improve and get better. Jesse, Brent, you mentioned. And yeah, this week is another week. It's it's and that's why I said what I said. Just is just one more week for them. Um, and uh, I don't take anything for granted. Uh, I, every every single week, you know, I'm pretty. You guys are one play from having to be the starter and playing 70 snaps. So show up every day on Monday, Tuesday. Every day of the week is important. Every day we don't have time to waste. And don't get bored with the routine. And that's an easy thing to do. Uh, week six, week seven, week eight. There's a structure and a routine that keeps you um, focused on the right things and not get distracted. But at the same time, it's easy. I think it's easier not to do the little things than, than it is to do the little things really well every single day. And that's why I say the message isn't going to change because it, I can't change what it takes. And it does take that. It's not reinventing the wheel. It's getting great at the basics. And so for young guys and old guys, um, it's easy to allow the routine of the season, the structure of a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday practice to bore you. And then next thing you've missed these amazing moments to grow and develop and not have a, a game rep mentality. You know, practice habits equal game reality. In every single game, you know, guys are going to make mistakes. Every game. I've never been in a game where they haven't. And uh, right now, our margin uh, for error is really thin. And so mistakes that we make are, you know, expounded uh, tenfold. But uh, these guys have, um, this week is every bit as important, but last week was the same message. And uh, you're hopeful that, you know, they'll get a, a, an opportunity early in the game to go in there and uh, continue to gain, you know, really valuable um, experience and also help us win. Brent, you mentioned on your, your coach's show last night about uh, Isaiah Autry Jen, Jen, maybe getting him uh, elevated. Just in turn, I just wanted to ask you maybe about what you've seen from his development this season. And when you've got a young offensive lineman like that that maybe hasn't played yet, what are maybe the challenges or expectations in terms of just getting him maybe yeah. ready for a bigger Yeah, role? so his physical development since he's been here just been you know, tremendous. I mean, he's put on, you know, 40 plus pounds and strength addition that's come with that too. Uh, he's had a great fall. Um, he's going against really good people, and again, what you see on 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 game day shouldn't necessarily overwhelm you. It's not going to be dramatically different. You know, they're going against an elite group of players on defense that know how to practice. They're going to show up and they're going to bloody your nose every day in practice if you're not ready to fight back. And so we've really developed a great. Um, environment for those young offensive linemen to train in every single day. And several times this year, he's been the scout offensive lineman of the week. And uh, last week he was uh, as well. He's really improved. Um, is he is he game ready? You know, <laughs> we're about to find out, uh, you know. And sometimes uh, there's an easy transition and other times it's all right. You got to get out there now. You got to you got to, you know, take um, we, we give them a card every day. I give them a dot to dot. You know, what we do, we on the card, it'll say, we, we use the language that the offense 
uses. If they call that play this, I want them to learn. I don't want them to learn what we call it on defense. Oh, that's, call it the inside zone. Call it the counter. Call it the sprint out. Call it the dash. Call it the, you know, the switch verticals, whatever that is. I don't, that's how we talked on defense. But I want the scouts to learn what the offense calls it. And let's put it, I want it dot to dot, user friendly, nice and colored, every single card. I want you to use that verbiage. And we, we as a staff coach, the offensive scouts, uh, full-time coaches, but they also, we have some, uh, assistants that you know GAs and analysts and all these guys that also you know take pride in they're they're the they're the coach of the different positions and uh, but I want our guys to be confident so when they do go down and they take some reps at inside or they take some reps in team pass or they got to get called up quote unquote to the varsity that there's at least they don't have to overcome that you know there's a, a natural progression for them and so that piece um, shouldn't be as over overwhelming but um, in you know one week you might see a, a, a defense when you're game prepping that is really complicated and they do a lot with their front they do a lot with their pressure package they do a lot on uh, early downs and stemming and you know all these late late movement things that can be overwhelming for any offensive lineman that's why we do it on defense because it's hard on the offense and uh, you know if I got a I've got a freshman, first-time starter at center, you know, that I know we're going to play this week. We're going to try to make his life a living hell uh, with what he sees. And, um, and that's what people are going to do, you know. Uh, so that being said, he's really um, matured uh, mentally, uh, learned how to be a great practice player, how to strain and fight, uh, be physical, gain confidence through going against good people every single day. And uh, where we've recognized the performance, any opportunity, and I don't, I'm not going to, you know, throw out, you know, uh, compliments to guys if they, uh, if it, it's not warranted. And I want it to be a big deal uh, to our guys. And so, he's been a guy that I've been able to, you know, recognize uh, his performance and his development among several other young players uh, over the course of the season. There, man, they're they're getting after it. They're making improvement. They care. Uh, they're trying to make us better every day, and in turn, they get better as a as a byproduct of that. And he's done that. And obviously, having uh, losing uh, Sexton and losing uh, Jake Taylor um, has promoted uh, you know his opportunity. Uh, and where that all lands, we'll find out. Uh, my hope is that, hey man, we find ways. Let's let's find out what he can do. You know, let's uh, all within the realm of trying to be in a good rhythm and, and trying to win. Uh, first and foremost, whatever that looks like. But he's a he's a top four guy right now. You know we can't just crap another tackle in the middle of the season. You know, we, they, we don't get to go, uh, you know, into the whatever that's called in the NFL. Um, you know where they get to go take a guy off the quote unquote practice squad or the you know uh, that's in the free agent market or what have you. You know that you can pull off a, another team. So. Uh, but I, I really like the progress he's made. I, I traveled him last week to reward him. You know, he's going to Mississippi, uh, back where he's from. And uh, but I also just want to recognize, man, you need to, you know, we might need a, another, you know, a backup receiver potentially if disaster happened. But you know what? You know, that guy's not even taking practice reps. Man, you're here just killing it. And I'm gonna. Uh, so we we took him on last week's trip because of the improvement and because of the work and because his because of the you know the fight that he's shown every single day he's really made the most of his opportunities and he's a much more confident player now than he was uh, you know when we started you know the season and uh, and that, that doesn't happen for everybody I don't take that for granted you would assume but just because guys are coming to practice every day doesn't mean they're they're. They, they have that game rep mentality. And um, my job is to find spots where we're not practicing with the right kind of um, a passion and energy and the intensity uh, and, you know, and then, you know, get guys better. And I find I'm trying to, I'm, you know, I go to the scout teams. I go to the, uh, you know, the varsity guys. I'm down on the offensive field. I'm down on the defensive field. I'm, you know, involved in the special teams and trying to demand everybody's best. That's the gold squad, which is the scout team on all of our special teams units. Everybody's effort and attitude, um, their ability to execute on, you know, on the practice field is, uh, it's, you know, it's the difference between winning and losing. That's my mindset, and that's every coach that works for me, that's their mindset. 
And uh, my job is to always, you know, uh, you know, you don't get what you expect, you get what you inspect. And I'm, you know, always, uh, again, uh, very intentionally and relentlessly uh, trying to do that every single day that I show up. And uh, that's bottom line expectation of me. And, uh, and that's how you get guys better. And Isaiah is a, you know, a byproduct of, of all of that. Mm -hmm. When you take out the sacks, I think you guys had over 200 rushing yards against Ole Miss. When you consider just how good Ole Miss has been against the run, what can a game like that do for the confidence of this offense moving forward? And how can you kind of build off that going into this final month? It's, again, it's only affirmation of what I said. We, if, if we get out of our own way, if we don't beat Oklahoma, if we do the things that winning requires, even though we have X, Y, Z down with injuries, if we do that, and it's hard, it's always going to be hard. This year, it's even more difficult because of the challenge of the people that we're playing. But if we do that, we can play with anybody. We can beat anybody that we play against. And again, that may not be popular for people to hear and uh, everybody wants to find negative and all of it. That's cool, too. But I know what I know, I'm, and I'm not wrong. And that's affirmation of that. Uh, and we got to get better. And uh, if we make a, you know, a few more, if we can make some explosive plays in a passing game, that's going to open up even more opportunities uh, in the run game. And uh, if we stay on schedule, uh, if we don't you know, have pre-snap penalties, if we give them good field position, if we uh, don't uh, you know, have the unthinkable uh, you know, penalties that just, you know, it's, it's always hard to overcome. You know, you get to third and 20, it's really hard. Uh, against anybody on air uh, at practice so um, but yeah it's affirmation that we you know we're getting a little better you know you can't oh we, well you suck and you can't coach and you're not getting better and then you do that you know I unless I guess maybe it just happened by accident uh, on its own you know everybody fainted and we just ran ran you know unabated and uh, so we all know better than that and so you got to recognize okay we ask these guys to keep showing up and keep fighting and continue to, to work every single day. Just improve a little bit. Everybody, focus. I got to get better. You got to have self-awareness to, to get better. The coach can't think you got to get better and then you think you're doing just fine and then you're going to get better. It's not going to happen. And so you all have to have a level of humility and respect for what it takes to improve and get better. And then you have to have the accountability. You got to take the action and the accountability that goes along with it. And uh, coaches, coach plays a big part of that, and the player does as well. And so, again, I'm, as I said, man, I'm proud of our guys for the fight and the physical toughness that they showed. And, you know, our tight ends block better. You know, we chip better. Uh, you know, that was more noticeable. We put, you know, helmets under chin straps, and we knocked people backwards, and the pile went in the right direction. Not always, but better. And, and so, uh, but not good enough to win. And so there's, there's more to be had. In that run game, you talked over the past couple games about the consistent effort you're getting from Javante. But in addition to that, how cool has it been to kind of see him find his voice in the locker room and yeah. become more of a vocal leader for this team? Yeah, and we've really, um, and DeMarco's done a really nice job. Javante's taken ownership in that. He's naturally a really quiet guy. And uh, we've worked really hard intentionally of promoting his improvement, promoting uh, his uh, competitive uh, toughness that he has shown over the last several months and uh, and then put him awkwardly uh, several months ago in position where, hey, man, what do you got to say? And you do that over time. It has compound interest and in where he gets more and more comfortable in doing that, put him in front of the team. Uh, and uh, and he's taken, taken a liking to it. And part of when you, you start to have success as a player, then you feel like, okay, I have I, I should have something to say now. I have a right to have something to say. If you're a guy that's been banged up or maybe you're not performing at a winning level like you're capable of, you feel as a as a quote unquote leader, maybe you're supposed to be a leader, you don't feel like you don't feel as comfortable. And uh, so some of that, again, improvement and the things that I said have lended, you know, uh, you see this de real development as a, as a voice in the locker room uh, for our guys on offense where you have a lot more new guys. Again, I don't know how many guys started games for us last year in that group, but there were not many. And so it's, you know, so it's hard to have all these, you know, great voices that are leaders. You know, the coach can't be the only one. 
and but he has to be the one you know but he can't be the only one and uh, not if you're going to be you know uh, what we want them to be it's usually because you've got not only great buy-in which we do have that and so that's a leadership skill too is great buy-in and showing up every day but a voice other than the coach is always you know appropriate and and uh, helps uh, the growth of everybody but he's been fantastic really proud of you know the young man that he's becoming really getting comfortable in his own skin uh, on the field and off the field mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Coach, wondered about Kevin Johns. What did you see in him that led you to promote him? And then what have you seen since then that both he yeah, and Yeah, well, I was Johns? excited about I've I know I've known Kevin Johns for uh, a long time as far as his career because he's worked with people that I know and uh, and certainly I watched him at Duke and uh, being in the ACC for a de- decade and watching uh, the transition and the coaching uh, there uh, on that staff, and and then watching them after, after we got to uh, to Oklahoma, watching them uh, beat Clemson a year ago and have a, a really good year uh, with that quarterback. Again, knowing that uh, they did more with less there uh, as well, and uh, uh, Kevin Wilson always bragged on him as being a really good football coach. Uh, you know, really value uh, Kevin's uh, opinion. And, and then Seth had a relationship with him. And uh, when all this went down a year ago in uh, January, uh, and we're finishing out the staff, uh, Kevin was somebody. Uh, There's a short list of guys that, uh, you know, we talked about as being able to bring on that could help us in, in lots of ways, offensively, but also, you know, in other ways, maybe they had experienced as a veteran coach. And, uh, you know, losing uh, Matt Wells uh, going to Kansas State, kind of somebody maybe that could be in, in that role. And uh, but he's been uh, really, and I, I know I walked everybody through, uh, you know, how how we got to where we got to. But uh, when he when I asked him, you know, brought him into my office again a week ago Sunday, hey, uh, would you be willing to do this? And this is what my expectations are. This is what I would have you do. And this is how it would all work. Uh, and he, and again, uh, courageously uh, said yes. You know, I don't ever take anything for granted. You know, <laughs> I don't want somebody to, to tippy toe and have one foot in it. You know, you ain't gonna be worth a flip. Uh, I want somebody that's fully submerged all the way, uh, fearless and excited. And and so how you respond is gonna determine on. You know, I gave him the what do you think. You know, and, and, and then you need to respond the right way. And he did. Uh, he didn't flinch. And I was excited about that. And uh, not surprised, but I don't, like I said, I don't take that for granted. And then first time I, you know, watched him interact, you know, at practice, I could say, okay, good. That's, you know, I'm sometimes I've, um, I just, every play I want to coach. I like, I like, I'm, I coach every play. You know, uh, like it's the biggest play in the world, and I'm gonna. Uh, and if you might have a plus on the grade sheet, but I'm gonna find. But it could have been better, and and I like. Um, and everybody's different. Not every coach is the same, and you can still be an incredibly effective, successful coach not coaching that way. Uh, but um, that's how I was raised in the profession, and so I like it when I see it, and I saw that immediately. I like answers. Um, I like. Um, I like details. I like uh, not taking anything for granted uh, at practice. Uh, and every opportunity is an opportunity to teach, grow, and learn, and get better. And so I saw that piece um, that I – and it might have been running from one – a uh, hash to the other and coaching on the run and I like that and I'm listening and I'm watching and I'm always doing that and uh and and again I'm not I'm not the I'm not the kicking coach so I don't try to be the expert kicker you know he, he misses it to the right I'm like hey man we got to kick that thing down the middle okay you know uh and again tongue in cheek uh but uh I Try not to major in the minors, and the minors are important, you know, for somebody. And uh, but you know, you know, as a young coach, I was given great autonomy, and um, all at the same time with a little bit of guidance and encouragement and correction. Uh, but you know, that's why I pay you, Brent Venables. That's what Bill Schneider, you know, would say. And uh, you know, one of the first and only times as a young coach, I said. <laughs> 
he says, what are we thinking, guys, in, uh, in our, maybe it might have been in the debut of Texas Tech in the first Big 12 game in the history of the Big 12, uh, K-State versus uh, uh, Texas Tech and Spike Dykes. And we get to a, a third down timeout, and uh, we come over on the sideline, Mike's up in the booth, and we're like, mm, we could do the, you know, play zone, we can go man, and, you know, I'm like, Coach, what do you, I'm like, do I say it? I'm scared, I'm intimidated. Coach, what do, you, what do you think? He goes, Brent Venables, that's why I pay you. And uh, we made some kind of – I don't know if it was right on that. We won the game. and, uh, and uh, But I, I really like ambitious, driven, uh, prepared coaches. And uh, I believe the best coaches, you know, have foresight. And, uh, and I've tried to challenge, you know, I always try to challenge coaches. I put, I've been in the defensive room as a, as, a, as a coordinator. You know, my job is to develop that staff and to clearly define standards and expectations and uh, how we do what we do and to put pressure on them constantly and uh, to, uh, again, don't ever settle. And, uh, but all the while, uh, you know, affirm them too. They need that too. It's hard enough. And you can't just beat people down and tell them what they suck at and what we're miserable and how we failed today. You can do that, but it can't be only that. And, uh, and, and so, you know, my challenge for everybody on the staff is to you show up every day like you're the, you're the head coach of your position. You're the head coach of the team. You know, the success or the failure of, of the whole program is riding on your, dis- shoulder, on your shoulders, on in your decisions, um, and what you do at Indy and how you handle third down period and all of those things. And if you're doing it right, it should be that way. And, and you don't want to let people down. And you don't want guys that are paralyzed either. You want people that are confident. And I, I took the coaches back several, a couple of months ago, early in the season. I'm like, man, you, game day ain't the time to where we're trying to figure stuff out. There are times where you got to make some adjustments on the fly. That happens uh, subtly and, and sometimes in a big way on a lot of game days. Uh, you know, but I, I go, we, we went to at Texas A&M on the road in 1996 and the very first third down play, Mike Stoop says, hey, what do you, and man, he couldn't spit it out. I freaking cut him off. I'm like, cat bliss check silver, man. I was so ready, you know, to tell him what we're going to, I'm signaling in, you know, I'm, oh, you're going to ask me, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm confident and I'm ready. You need a little bit of help. Everybody needs a little help. I'm ready. Okay, I'm re- I'm I'm not gonna flinch, and I don't care what the result is. I'm ready. I don't care what everyone thinks. I'm ready. I'm prepared. I've played this game, even as the lowly assistant. You know that you may never ask. My butt's ready, and everybody should show up to work like that. Everybody should be deeply invested in. Okay, I know he's kind of leading the the red zone. You know, package for this week, and he's kind of been the here's what we need to probably do and ultimately it's one guy's decision or it's all of us decision but everybody should be ready you know what if the other two coaches stroke out and they can't make the plays well your ass needs to be ready and and why that 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 shouldn't with any other mindset shouldn't it is not the right mindset and not everybody just grabs onto that naturally uh but when you're trying to put pressure on people to to show up with the right attitude every day you put the put the pressure on the players that way you know, to know the third down, you should know it like the coordinator knows it. A good coach is going to teach his players in such a way as this is what I'm thinking, and you start doing that on Monday. Don't wait till Wednesday. Don't wait till Thursday. Don't well, he kind of likes this. No, he's going to love this because that's what we get him good at during the course of the week. And sometimes that's not appropriate for for everybody on the roster, but I think that's got to be the mindset, you know, of the coach. And uh, Kevin Johns, you know, that's what I saw. And I said well, he was like a pig in the mud. It's because of all of those things, and and and, and not overcoaching. You know, sometimes again we've all again been guilty of overcoaching. We, as a parent, sometimes you overparent. You know, trying to keep him out of harm's way. Well, the best thing you can do sometimes as a parent is, like, oh, okay, he's Mr. Know It All. Let's let him fail. You know, all right, he didn't. You've been telling him to take his his practice gear for basketball practice today you know, over and over and over you keep telling him he needs to do it on his own he gonna leave him at the house he ain't practicing today coach gonna you know punish him and he's not in the starting lineup but he needs that and sometimes we can over parent too you know and uh sometimes you can over coach but i believe in um you not wasting a, a day not wasting a practice rep it don't matter what it is and that's what i saw him do and 
uh, in a really natural, easy, organic way. And you would have expected it if he was the analyst every day, all season long, all spring and all summer, where he's working with him intimately, but he wasn't. And, uh, and so that's uh, what I thought. And I thought you saw, because of um, Kevin's ability to make it that easy from a transition, and a transition that who the hell would think that would be easy? There's nothing easy about it. There's nothing easy about if the staff was the same, getting ready week in and week out. There's nothing easy about that either. There certainly isn't when you have a, a coaching change and then at that position, a guy that may be the most important position on the whole team. It touches the ball and makes decisions and all those things. And so for me to, you know, uh, to undervalue what a fantastic job that he and the rest of the staff did, um, you know, would not be appropriate. I'm going to sit here and we lost the damn game, you know. So uh, I've gone out of my way. You asked a question. Uh, I think it's appropriate to answer it, you know, adequately. And, uh, you know, those are the things that, you know, I can have a, a great appreciation for and the players benefit from. There are still a couple more. If you're still yep, that's good. Question on a couple of uh, operational issues from Saturday. Uh, first drive, you guys first offensive drive, they stopped the play yeah. twice. The center ref jumps in there and stops to let Ole Miss sub, even though you guys did not sub. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the fourth quarter, um, Ole Miss got their second sideline warning, mm -hmm. which is, should be a five yard penalty. <laughs> yeah, so what they did, and it looked like that was a, a second sub, but um, they're going to give the SEC is going to give a little latitude, and I'd have to go back and watch. But the only a reasonable exp explanation is the 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 last play ended on the a sideline. You know, man, if you send put anybody in or not, that's that's the uh, some leagues didn't abide by those, or maybe they were inconsistent uh, with that ruling. The SEC. Because uh, they know what it is. You you go out of bounds and you you kind of slip a guy in, and you know if if you don't see it, because there's chaos. What are the refs looking at? They're not looking at oh, did they send somebody in? But if you in the your team ends on your sideline, you can swip them the receivers. People were doing that a couple of years ago. So it's easy to like hey, if it ends on the sideline, whether you somebody subbed or not, we're going to give the opportunity sub. I like that. I think that's fair. Uh, that's a good rule. And so maybe the fourth down, it was, maybe that was part of it. Uh, and you know, there's a there's a method to some of those substitution patterns. And for me, I'm just looking at practical. If the if we are allowed to sub, I'm the head coach now. We're allowed to sub. Uh, you know, then you know, don't do a late sub. You do a late sub, and now you got either call a timeout or you got to take a delay because you late subbed. You know, around 22 seconds. You ain't got enough time to sub, because watch what they do, how they sub. And uh, so uh, you're going to be – so teams that do a lot of subbing, uh, this, um, like on offense, it can be a, a, a real issue for you if you're, if you're trying to go fast. And if you're not trying to go fast, if you don't sub fast enough, and, uh, and then all of a sudden you, got, you need a motion in there or maybe you got a shift and then a motion, it's a real problem. And so, uh, but I'd have to go back and look uh, at that. And hey, you know, I got enough problems. You know, uh, does a does a penalty there help you? Maybe, you know, uh, in stopping people, uh, maybe. But uh, I got enough problems. You know, that's those are things that I'm not going to overrule. It's not like that's a reviewable thing. You know, and I can, you know, bitch moan and complain, turn things in. You know, it doesn't create a solution uh, for anything or anyone. Do you have no communication in that situation? Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah. And then you just, I'll find out, you know, and then they get back and, you know, well, it wasn't really a warning. It was, you know, it really, you know, they gave him a little, it wasn't like the last time. And so whatever. It's good. I'm not. So, Coach, you've been in the midst of all these high-pressure SEC games. and now It's all high-pressure, just... It's always that. I, I know what you're saying, though, uh, but it's – I don't want to think it's a new, it's a new thing because it's the SEC. Um, the margin of error is small. We, we said going in as a one-possession league, and every week seems like, oh, man, you're the best players in the world you're playing. Uh, and, uh, and I, again, say that uh, in a humorous way, but uh, it's all high pressure. Always has been.
Yeah, but now they're playing Maine in the midst of all of that, yeah. a non-conference game, yep. you know, championship subdivision. On one hand, obviously, you've played a lot of tough games. On the other hand, you guys have struggled. What mental approach do you need to see from your guys, given the change in opponent? Well, just what you do every every week. It's you got to know the DNA of the new team, but it's a nameless, faceless. It's about you, your standards, how you practice, how you prepare, the sense of urgency, the fundamentals. Are you pr improving, getting better? Your mindset, your attitude, your 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 workload, your intensity, your, you know, your focus on detail. You know, you can't cheat the game. And so it don't matter about the opponent. If we don't take care of us, if we don't do those things that I just said, if we're not coming in, if we've been, a, oh, I'm going to come in and do extra recovery this week. I'm going to get, I got a routine of red light therapy. Oh, but not this week because this team, we're only favored by this or we're not favored. We're down. So, oh, this is Texas. So I'm going to practice this way. And, I, and listen, I know what the results have been. I've, I've, you know, in a really tough way, have lived through all of it. You know, I'm the leader of it, and I take all of it, and that's appropriate. Uh, but man, you 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 don't play to a scoreboard or a, again, a, you know, an opponent. You just don't. And every week is again a season of its own. It's always the biggest game of the year. Uh, it's a great opportunity to improve and get better for us. We're on a three-game losing streak. Us, hey, let's get back on track. Let's start to create a little momentum, and then feel a little bit better. Winning cures a lot, and uh, having some success develops confidence and uh, you can still get confident uh, being down on the scout team like an Isaiah Autry uh, even though we're losing but man winning is a is a is affirmation in some ways and uh, so but but winning I don't never take it for granted and uh, nobody wants me to come in here and go through all the stuff I could I could brag on Maine nobody well, they got 17 graduates, and you know, well, what does that mean? They got a lot of experience, but nobody cares. And it's like I said, I, we're not, we're, we're focused on Oklahoma, uh, like we always have been. There are schemes that we got to get ready for, and we need to get them down quickly. And uh, you know, otherwise it'll get sloppy and it don't look good. You know, that'll show up too. And if uh, you know, if I said, hey fellas, uh, we're we're playing this opponent this week, I'll see you on Thursday. I'm gonna give you the first three days of the week off, and we'll we'll start up on Thursday. How how do you think that's gonna look? No matter who you play, it's gonna look like crap. And uh, and and but I don't want our guys. Hey, well this week let's let's meet a little longer. Let's practice a little longer. Let's. You know, no, we, there's, a, there's, a, there's a routine, there's a system, there's a method. Every year you might, hey, man, we're a little bit banged up. We're getting thin. Well, we normally scout with scrimmage all of our young players. Well, a lot of our young players are our old players now. They're with us. So we, we haven't been scrimmaging weekly the last six weeks. Uh, and so there's, um, you know, there's that. You know, so you handle it every year. You, but as you get to about midway point, you start, incrementally starting to shorten periods and try to keep guys fresh and uh, so you're always doing that and uh, you know maybe a little more you know we need development but man we got to get healthy you know we're we don't have the depth that we did have before injuries like that's real so what happens well the backups are taking a hell of a lot more reps we don't so you don't have an as many reps as you can get in in 20 hours if you do that, you're going to rip all the tread off the tires. And so we have sports science, and we can really do a really good job of, in a very, uh, uh, you know, infinite way, you can really break it all the way down to the core of what, what it looks like and compare it to a game, what, what, it, what it looks. We have, we have several seasons of data, what these Monday practices, you know, game nine, what that looks like compared uh, to other years or what it looked like compared to last week or the last several weeks and and then guys don't play as fresh or they're not as explosive um and uh, but we needed our reps we need to we need to get the reps in and you know think about receivers or tight ends and we've had you know guys banged up it, it is what it is but there's a cumulative effect of that too and i got to gauge all of it and uh so um you know we're trying to continue to develop this team you know, it's important that we do that. And if we make improvement, we get a few guys back and we can, you know, maybe build on some of the success that we had on, not enough, but some of the success, you know, we'll have a chance to, to, to put a winning streak together, you know, to finish the year. 
and uh, going to be tough. It's going to be a great challenge, but it's doable. That's our focus and our mindset, and, but it's on what's in front of us right now. And we go have a, a great Tuesday practice. Um, but we were 7% less this, uh, this Monday as a football team uh, in our output than we were uh, a week ago Monday, and that's total mileage and all of those things. And, again, that's going into week nine. Hey, man, let's slightly pull back uh, and try to get some guys healthy. What happens a lot of times when you play a lot of youth, their bodies aren't built up. From a physical uh, stamina standpoint, they just don't, they have less tread on their tires, uh, believe it or not. And as the season goes on, the mentally, physically, all of that starts to diminish to a certain degree. Jaden Zach Jackson is an alpha, and he's, he's um, certainly not immune from that, but less for him. Uh, some other guys, is just like, oh, we got to do it again, you know, and that's where it's really hard. And the good teams, man, they can, they can do it week in and week out. And they just start dropping, you know. You see those, man, they got upset, another upset, another one less team that everybody's talking about. And because it's really hard to do it week in and week out, my job is to get develop that routine, that mindset that we do things a certain way. And over the long haul, that will serve us well. And, uh, and even in the middle of a three-game losing streak, not that you're not always evaluating everything, you certainly are. Um, but, uh, you know, we're going to, continue to have the same type of structure, uh, make the appropriate adjustments like you would any time going into your ninth week. And, uh, and, I don't, and I don't care who it is. And if we're playing the Dallas Cowboys and everybody else is playing, you know, this other team, you know, maybe I'm, I'm saying, hey, t tell me why that makes sense, you know, from a strategy standpoint. Uh, but you know, I'm not complaining. I'm not promoting. We just, I just show up and uh, and play and coach.